hi guys welcome back to my channel so today I just wanted to talk about my birth story because I did videos about me being pregnant and then I had the baby and then I didn't really say anything about it so this is my video that I'm gonna talk about my birth story and then I'm gonna be done with it and then we can move on to just cooking okay so I'm gonna start from the beginning so it was June 23rd and it was a doctor's appointment where I was getting ultrasounds because I had excess fluid in my womb so they wanted to monitor it monitor I can't even <laughs> I will be I wanted to monitor it a little bit closer so they had me go in every week for an ultrasound, which is not normal. So on this day, I had the ultrasound. I was due on the 30th. So exactly one week later, it would have been my due date. And the doctor was like, hey, if you're still pregnant on your due date, I want, I want to induce you. And I was so upset because if you watch my other pregnancy videos, I really wanted to have a, a natural childbirth. So I was pissed. I wasn't pissed, I was sad. So after I left the doctor's office, I was sobbing in the car, driving home. Jesse was with me and I was crying because I really did not want to be induced. I wanted to have this like natural childbirth. I didn't want any drugs, I didn't want anything. So we're driving, driving, driving on the way home and I started getting these really bad stomach cramps. And I thought like I just had to really poop. Like, I'm having diarrhea, I just have to poop, like, it's fine. So we stop at the gas station to get slushies. I'm literally dying. It's like the worst stomach cramps I've ever had in my life. And I, I don't know why, but I just thought, like, I just have to poop. So I get home, and needless to say, I really did have to poop. Like, I pooped and pooped and pooped and pooped and there was nothing left in me to poop but I was still having these stomach cramps and I was like oh wait a minute is this labor am I in labor right now and I just think I have to poop because if you don't know when you go into labor some people do get diarrhea because it cleans out your system so my doctor's office visit was at like four o'clock so from four o'clock to about eight o'clock, I was having contractions, they didn't know it, just thinking I had to poop. And then after I realized like this isn't just poop, like I'm in I'm in labor. This has to be labor. I started to time them. And my contractions were lasting sometimes two to three minutes long of a, tr a contraction. And that's another reason why I thought I just had to poop because I've never heard of anybody having a contraction for literally three minutes. Like it was agony. It was crazy. There's like, it was, it was the worst. And they were also coming like every like four minutes, every two minutes, they were coming pretty freaking quick at this point. And it was only been like four hours since they started. So I was like, this is not normal. Like something's, something's happening. This is not normal. So I called the doctor's office. I'm like, I think I'm in labor. And she's like, well, time for two hours. And if they're like five minutes apart, what was it? What's the thing? I, I don't even know what the thing is. Like how they're supposed to be timed in order for you to go to the doctor. She was like, do that for two hours and then call me back and then we'll see. I called her back in 45 minutes because it was so bad I couldn't do it anymore and I was like I need to go to the doctor I need to go to the hospital right now like right now like I do not want one more contraction I can't do this this is too much like this is the worst pain I have literally ever felt in my life I'm like dying I was in the shower because that's the only thing that made it feel a little bit better and I was I was talking on the phone to the doctor or whoever I was talking on the phone to 
while I was in the shower. And I was like, I need to come in right now. And she's like, okay, but they might send you home. And I was like, I don't care. They're not sending me home. There's no way. So drive in to the hospital, get there. This guy comes in the room and I'm having contractions like back to back to back to back to back. And I'm three centimeters dilated, he says. And I was like, oh shit, they're gonna send me home because you have to be four centimeters from every YouTube video I've ever seen for you to be able to stay at the hospital. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna go home. I can't go home. I cannot go home. I do not wanna go home. Like, I was panicking. That's how bad the contractions felt. And I think it would have been better if it was spaced out a little bit more like i thought it would be and lasting only like a minute these were lasting like three minutes long it was insane so he's like you could stay and i was like oh my god yes he's like do you want an epidural and i was like yes i was like forget the natural childbirth forget everything i said this is not happening like i need this epidural stick it in me right now where where can i go get to get this epidural it needs to happen immediately like i was panicking like i can't have one more contraction i can't handle this this is too much i'm gonna pass the fuck. i'm gonna pass out so the lady is trying to stick the iv in my wrist which also i did not want an iv but again i'm getting an epidural so at this point i don't care what you're doing to me just give me the epidural and she's like well i want to wait till your contraction is over with to stick the ep the needle in you and i was like i don't care maybe it'll take my mind off of my contraction just stab me with the thing so we can get this show on the road here sister like come on what are you doing so she gets the IV in i go to the room and the guy comes in to do the epidural and he is literally talking and talking and talking and talking and i'm just like sitting there like please 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 jesus like i don't care just stick it in like just stop talking please stick it in i was so like i need it right now like crazy crazy so i signed the paperwork he sticks it in and the sweet <laughs> relief comes and it's literally not even like 10 minutes and i start feeling better and everything's great i'm like jesse this is great i'm so happy and then by the time i got to the hospital and the epidural was in it was like 10 o'clock i want to say i don't know how the timeline actually went because i well i'll get to it but um the doctor comes in and she's like let me check you and she's like holy crap you're nine centimeters i was like yes she's like this is crazy that you're nine centimeters already and i was like okay so then i sat there for a little while longer i think it was like one more hour and then she came back and she she checked me and she's like you're 10 centimeters and she's like we might have to break your water so as she's like in there with her fingers my water actually breaks so that was good because she didn't have to break it and she's like oh oh wait he pooped and i was like what he pooped in you and i was like okay and she's like well i'm going to did she give me some medicine i can't remember if i was like still like a tiny bit left to be dilated before i could start pushing i don't know if she gave me something i know she like did this like thing where she like moved it with her actual hand so i don't know but i i was able to push i guess so i started pushing and i was pushing and i was pushing and i literally couldn't feel anything i couldn't feel a thing which kind of sucked because i feel like if i could have felt it i would have been able to push better but i couldn't feel anything so i'm just like like pushing i don't even know what's going on i don't even know if anything's happening down there i'm just trying to push with all my might and then she comes back and she's like okay you're doing good and then i'm pushing 
and I could finally feel some kind of pressure. Like I could feel like he's moving down more. And I was like, oh my God, he feels like he's gonna come out soon. So she's like, okay, do you wanna keep pushing? And I was like, yeah. So she's like, okay, I'll check on you in a little while. So she comes back at hour two. And I'm still not like, he's still not crowning, nothing's happening. And she's like, okay, well, if you wanna keep pushing, I'll give you another hour to push. And then we're gonna have to talk about C-section because he pooped in you, his, he was like, his heart rate was, I don't know if it was going up or going down, one of the two, but they kept like maneuvering me around and they would get better. And I was like, all right. So I like pushed and pushed and pushed. And at two and a half hours, I was like, can you go get the doctor? Like, I can't, I'm exhausted. It was like five o'clock in the morning at this point. See, that's why I don't know how the timeline went because I knew it was like midnight and I was almost nine centimeters. And then all of a sudden it was five o'clock, but I only pushed for three hours. So at the three hour mark, she comes back in and she's like, so, what's going on and I was like I want a c-section I can't do this I'm exhausted I literally can't find the strength in my body to push anymore and she's like okay sounds like a plan we'll get you set up so then I get set up oh I totally forgot to tell you okay so halfway through pushing I like moved and the epidural kind of got stuck on the back of the bedding and it kind of came out a little bit. So then I started feeling it only on one side of my body. So then they tried to fix it. They didn't go get the anesthesiologist or the epidural dude or whoever does the epidural. They didn't go get them, they just tried to fix it. And then what happened? So then when I knew I was gonna C-section, he came back in there and he was talking to me about some stuff. He said so much stuff to me. I don't even know what the hell was going on. I was just like, let's get this over with. Like, I just want this to be over. I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. So they wheel me into the operating room. And the guy's still talking to me about, like, drugs and, like, what they're going to do to me and all this other stuff. And then he said, you won't feel any pain. You'll just feel pressure. And I was like, okay, sounds good. So they have me on this bed, and I'm just like this. And they're poking me with something. They're like, do you feel this? And I was like, it feels like the tip of a pen is like poking me in the stomach. And he's like, okay, I can live with that. So then they start doing it. They cut me open, I don't feel it. But when they pull him out of me, I screamed. And I, this is why like, I don't know if this is normal because I've seen people have C-sections on YouTube and they don't scream. I was screaming. It hurt. It wasn't just pressure. It hurt when they pulled him out of me. So they get him out. And then after he was pulled out, I didn't feel any pain again. And I was kind of like delusional. Like I was in and out. Like I barely remember anything happening in that room. So all of a sudden, Jesse's right next to me because they didn't bring him in there right away. So Jesse's finally right next to me. He's holding the baby and I'm looking at the baby and I'm just like, okay, nothing. Like I didn't feel like, oh my God, it's my baby. Nothing. I didn't feel anything towards this child. I was just like, okay. I was half out of it, exhausted, just in another world. So what happens next? I don't remember them like the rest after that moment, I don't remember anything. And then I wake up in the room and I wake up to the baby like making noises and kind of crying a little bit. And Jesse's like off, like against the wall holding the baby. And then I remember I fed the baby. And then this other doctor came in because the person who did the C-sections shift ended so my doctor that i actually saw at my last appointment right before i went into labor came in and oh so if you don't know from my last videos that 
I didn't have one doctor, I had a group of doctors, so whoever was on call was gonna be the doctor who delivered my baby. So I didn't have just one doctor. So that lady came in that I had just saw the night before at my doctor's appointment, and she's like, okay, so you're bleeding a lot and you're clotting and I need, she said something, something was happening inside my body. She's like, I need to see if I could fix it by basically sticking her hand up in me and like trying to like grab the stuff out. I don't know what the hell that was about, but she's like, she literally stuck her whole freaking hand inside of me. And I see her pull her hand out. I screamed. Let me just tell you, that was the worst thing that has ever happened to me. I don't know. I feel like the contractions were more painful than her sticking her whole freaking wrist deep inside of me. But it was pretty comparable. So she pulls her hand out and it's like covered in blood. I'm like, all right. I don't know if that's normal, if that's not normal, what's going on. And she's like, okay, so you're bleeding a lot. And we're gonna have to do a D and C. And I was like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck a D and C is. Sure, whatever. So Jassy's off in the corner, just looking like traumatized. So the anesthesiologist comes in, starts talking to me about what's gonna happen. She's yelling because I drink like a. Uh, buttload of Gatorade like I drink so much Gatorade and she's like who let her drink Gatorade who let her drink the Gatorade she can't drink Gatorade when she's gonna buy out to have surgery and be put under so then I barfed up all the Gatorade thank God because she said if I did it while I was under that I could get would aspirate and get pneumonia and I was like what the hell so I barfed it all up and they wheeled me into the operating room. And as I'm being put under, they have the mask on my face. As I'm being put under, all I hear the lady saying is, where's the blood? An anesthesiologist, where's the blood? And the lady standing next to her, I don't know if it was a nurse or whatever. She's like, well, the doctor didn't think we needed it. And she's like, are you kidding me? Is there even her blood type in the building? And she's like, yeah. And I'm just like sitting there like, slowly passing out like oh my god get the blood where's the blood like why is there no blood why do i need blood is this like is something bad happening to me and i just don't know because they just haven't told me which basically yes yes they did not tell me anything and something bad was happening to me so have the procedure come out wake up and I'm dead like I have no energy I'm exhausted but the whole time like all of this was happening I was so nonchalant like the c-section I went from not not wanting to have any medication to being so nonchalant about having to have medication having to have a c-section I was just like whatever I don't even care so freaking laid back about the whole situation so I wake up and I have no energy and I'm laying there and they take me to a different room which is going to be my room for the rest of my stay which ended up being four full days oh hold on okay so I'm in the room and people keep coming in to check on me and every time they come in to check on me, they like push on my stomach to see if like a bunch of blood is coming out of me. And they keep checking on me and checking on me like for at, like all day long, that's all they do. And let me tell you, after you have a C-section and uh, whatever a DNC is, and they keep pushing on your stomach to see if you're bleeding too much, it was so painful. I'm like, why do you guys keep doing this to me? Why are you torturing me? What's happening? So they ended up giving me a blood transfusion. And I was like, okay. Still did not register in my brain like something horrible has happened to me. Still. Blood transfusion. I'm still like, whatever, it's fine. Like this is this is normal. This must happen all the time. I like everybody seems like Nonchalant, nobody's making it out to be like this big deal. Like, it's fine. So then 
the next day after my first blood transfusion, they come in, test, take my blood, to test it or whatever. And they're like, okay, we're gonna give you another blood transfusion. And I was like, what the hell? Like, then that's when I started freaking out. Like, who has a baby and needs two blood transfusions? This doesn't seem freaking normal. And I was so weak, I couldn't hold the baby. He was, by the way, he was born almost nine pounds. Two ounces away from nine pounds. So he was a heavy baby. Couldn't hold the baby. I couldn't really get him to latch because I couldn't position him right to breastfeed him. So I was really exhausted, didn't have any blood in my body, and just miserable. Like couldn't really get up. It was just a whole thing. Like I barely could get out of bed by myself to go to the bathroom. I couldn't like hold the baby, nothing. And it was horrible because like my baby's crying and I can't even get up to comfort him. I had to rely on Jesse the whole time. And I was just thinking like, what if I didn't have Jesse? You know, who's gonna take care of my baby if, when he's crying? Yes, movies. He's making noise in a little swing over here. So that's when I started freaking out. I actually started, that's the first time I cried about the whole situation is then. The second time I got the blood transfusion because at this point I'm just like, this isn't normal. Like what's happening to me? I don't even know. So come to find out like a couple weeks after that, I finally like log on to my little like website for the doctor's office. And it said that I had a postpartum hemorrhage and lost almost two liters of blood. And I was like, hold the, hold the phone here. I lost almost two liters of blood and had a postpartum hemorrhage. And not once did anybody ever freaking tell me that that had happened to me. I had to read it on a freaking chart a couple weeks after I had the baby. So that was kind of messed up of the doctors. Like, you're not gonna tell me what's really going on with me. You're just gonna be like, oh yeah, we're gonna give you some blood and we're gonna do this procedure and all this other stuff. Why didn't you just tell me I had a postpartum hemorrhage? I guess that would have freaked me out more, but still, like it's my right to know as a patient what is actually going on with my body. Crazy. Um, so yeah, that was my birth story. Kind of traumatic. I wasn't really that traumatized. I think Jesse's more traumatized than I am about the whole situation because at the time I just thought like, this is just, it has to be normal because everybody just seems so crazy, like not crazy about it. Like it's just like an everyday occurrence that this is happening. So I don't know. Like if I actually would have known what was happening to me while it was happening to me, I probably would have freaked out. Hold on, let me get this baby, he's going crazy. Oh. All right, this is my little Wolfie baby. Come on, Wolfie, don't, don't finish. He can pull his head up. He's just faking it right now. He's almost three months. I know you missed me. I know. Okay, so the worst part about the whole, whole experience was me not being able to pick him up or take care of them by myself. That was the worst part of everything that had happened to me. Now, I didn't have any side effects from the epidural, which I was really scared about. I also had, um, what's that called? A catheter for my pee, and I was definitely afraid of that. That's the whole reason I didn't want to have epidural in the first place is because I didn't want to have to have a catheter but it wasn't even bad, I couldn't feel it. They stuck it in after I got the epidural, so I couldn't feel them putting it in. And then she pulled it out after my DNC, like probably like eight hours after the DNC operation. She pulled it out, I was wide awake for it, and it was just like, it was like, it felt like somebody ripping off a Band-Aid. It wasn't that bad, and then Thank God I was able to pee after that. So it actually didn't turn out that bad as I thought. The whole 
thing actually wasn't that bad and yes they didn't tell me i was having a postpartum hemorrhage while i was having a postpartum hemorrhage but other than that their service was great everything was good the doctor who did my c-section she was like the sweetest angel like you ever meet somebody who has a personality that is just so damn nice and you're like you are the nicest person ever oh my god how are you this nice you're like a freaking angel that's how this doctor was she was like younger she wasn't like younger than me but she was like about my age it seemed like and she just was great so the scar i could barely even see it so she did a really good job i don't even know how they closed me up because i don't have like i didn't have like stitches in me i feel like they glued it shut because i didn't have stitches i didn't have dissolvable stitches i didn't have staples i didn't have any of that it was just like a seam in my stomach so i mean i don't know if i felt so bad after having a c-section because i lost so much blood so it'd be interesting to see how a c-section felt without losing a lot of blood because part of me feels like i just had like a bad experience with my c-section and not being able to pick up my baby or do any of that stuff because i was so weak from having no blood so yeah so i just wanted to tell that story because i feel like i needed to put an end to my pregnancy vlog or pregnancy videos so I just put a little button on it and tell you guys my birth story. And I wouldn't take back anything because this is my cute little baby nugget. His name is Wolf Raymond Wendell Powers. And he was born at 623 in the morning on... Shit. Is your birthday the 24th or the 23rd? I'm a horrible mother. I can't even remember when his birthday. It's the 23rd. You were born on the 23rd. Yes, you were. I'm sorry. I forgot your birthday. So he was born on June 23rd, 6.23 in the morning. And he was 21 inches long, 8.14 ounces. And he's just the cutest little baby. He's so sweet. And he's actually pretty freaking good. Like... I don't know how normal babies are, but he seems pretty chill to me. And he just wants to be held and loved, and he doesn't really like scream. And when he does scream, I know how to make him stop screaming right away because he's just a little nugget who just wants to eat and hang out. And I love him so much, and I already want a second one, but Jesse's terrified that I'm going to have another hemorrhage because I guess if you had one postpartum hemorrhage, you're more likely to have another one. And so I don't want to die and leave Wolfies by himself. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to have another one, but yeah, that was my birth story. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.